So what you're looking at right behind me is a matte print that I printed out, cut it and overlay it on the screen. It looks fantastic. I'm just kidding. This is really the matte coating on this new BenQ SW321C. It is matted, is anti-reflective, is matter than any other screen I've seen before, and it is fantastic and an absolute joy to use. This video is going to be a review of the BenQ SW321C. I'm Mart Suansang, BenQ Ambassador. Let's get started. Before we start, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel if you are new. Hit on the notification bell so you'll be updated every time I upload new videos and I have a lot more content regarding the SW321C coming down the pipeline. I have been using this display in my daily workflow for the past four weeks, been testing it for this review specifically too. And for full disclosure, BenQ have sent me this specific display to do a review on it and also to do testing from the different modes and the new features that have come about with it. In my daily usage, what I have done is use the display as a standalone. I've also used the display in a dual screen mode with the previous SW display. In this case, it's gonna be SW320. This is the replacement of that model and also BenQ design display, the PD3220U. And I have my thoughts about how I feel about using those two together. So what I'm gonna do is make a comparison video later on about them. So make sure you subscribe for that. And unlike those two 32 inch model I mentioned, this one is a true 32 inch panel where the other ones is 31 and a half rounded up to 32. So one of the specs about this display is that it is a 4K display, UHD resolution 3840 by 2160 for those of you who are keeping track. It has a contrast ratio of 1000 to one. Now, something to keep in mind though, is that when you do a hardware calibration on this, your contrast ratio is gonna go down. And part of the reason why is the contrast ratio has to do with how bright you set your screen to, to the darkest point. So in this case, if you're a photographer like me, you're gonna set it to somewhere between 80 to 120 candela. We're really dimming the screen down by a lot. So our contrast ratio is gonna go down significantly. The maximum brightness of this display is going to be 250 candela or 250 nits. For photography, this is going to be perfect because we are going to be dimming down the display anyway. For video work, in general, this is going to be a great display for it. However, if you should edit your content in HDR or you work in HDR, BenQ also has a solution for that specific type of workflow built into this display and I will talk about that later on in this video. Next up are a set of features that started about five years ago when BenQ launched their first pro display, the SW2700PT. In that display, BenQ have introduced a lot of great features to it, and those features has carried through in the SW line. In fact, many of those features is what I now consider to be the gold standard of professional photography display. This BenQ display, this latest model is no different. It has carried many of those features. However, as technology improves and the line matures, BenQ have also introduced many new features to this display and also improved many of the features that have come before. And like many of the recent BenQ SAB display, this one is also Pantone validated and CalMan verified. This way, if you're doing print work, you're guaranteed you're gonna get great result out of it. And if you're doing video work, you're gonna be able to color grade and do great video work on this display too. All of BenQ Pro line display comes with its own individual calibration report and this one's no different. Being that this is the SW line, the calibration report is two pages long and it is a lot more granular in terms of detail of what this display can do. It talks about so many different aspects, the uniformity of the display, how the Delta E result are measuring, different uniformity result, how's the color gamut looking, but primarily when I pull these out of the box, the first thing I look for is the delta E value that was measured from factory. In this case, the average delta E for this panel measured from factory is 0.28. That is just absolutely amazing. And the maximum delta E for this panel is 1.15. So the delta E value, if you're not familiar with that, is the variation between the color that this display can produce compared to the reference color. In this case, the delta E measures the variations between the two. The lower the number is better. Anything below a five is considered great. Anything below two is considered to be one of the top notch display. And the SW line has always been known to have a Delta E value of less than two. And this panel is no different. 
This display is hardware calibration capable. That means there is a computer and a ship that's built into the display. And when you run a custom hardware calibration on this, all of the adjustment that you are doing is actually done at the panel level. For some specification about the hardware LUT on this display is that BenQ have deployed a 16-bit 3D LUT for this model. And this has been upgraded from the 14-bit LUT in the previous generation SW models. Now, there's also one exception in the SW line, and that is the SW270C that is their 27-inch 2K display, which was recently released, and that one also has a 16-bit 3D LUT very similar to this one as well. The advantage of having a LUT in the display, as I mentioned before, is that all the adjustment is done at the panel level. This means that your video card can output full signal so that there are no tonal compressions whatsoever. This is very different than a software calibration, where in a software calibration, the ICC profile would change the color output of the signal from the video card, compressing, expanding some of the tones, and many times that can lead to banding issues, where this one you won't be getting that. Another advantage of working with a hardware calibrated display is that if your environment includes working with multiple display, the great thing about it, because the LUT, the lookup table, or the color adjustment is stored on the display, this way you can run multiple monitors and you're guaranteed that each one of those monitors are going to produce true accurate color results. Whereas if you have a display that can do software calibration only, many times your computer video card can only hold one LUT. That means that it can only show true color on one display while the other ones are going to be based on the first one. So having a hardware calibrated display will help in that aspect. The best software to use for display calibration for the SW model is going to be Palette Master Element. That is a software that BenQ have actually developed. And what's great about that software is that when you run that software due to calibration, it will talk directly with the computer inside the display. What you want to avoid is using the software that actually comes with your calibrator device. And part of the reason why is because those will only do software calibration. It won't access the hardware calibration capability of these display. However, something new to note about this SW321C is that BenQ have opened up their 16-bit 3D LUT up to third-party software. In this case, you can use the software from Calman or Lightspace to do a third-party calibration. And those one will access the LUT inside the display as well. And while we are talking about hardware calibration and Palette Master Element, let me address a few things. In some past releases or recent releases of Palette Master Element, it has been known to have reliability issues and a lot of bugs regarding calibration. As of this filming, the latest version that they have, 1.3.8, has been known to be a really reliable version of Palette Master Element, and I have been able to calibrate this display using that version on different computer and different Mac operating system and achieve a Delta E value of less than two for this display on the verification part. A few reasons too why I like to use Palette Master Element is that it's included with the display. It is a free software. It's not a third party software that you have to go out and buy. And secondly, it's developed by BenQ, the manufacturer of the hardware. So in this case, what you're going to get is an access to the level of hardware and software synchronization that you may not get with other third party software. This display has a 10 bit panel and is implemented via an 8 bit plus FRC. In this case, 8-bit is carrying majority of the signal, and the extra 2-bit is done by FRC, which stands for frame rate control. What frame rate control is doing is that it's changing some of the colors of the pixels rapidly so that you are perceiving that it's showing extra color that are beyond the 8-bit spectrum. In this case, this panel is not true 10-bit. However, if you are looking for a true 10-bit, the display or the cost for this display for that matter will be at least two, if not three times as much. And for many of the photographers, for majority of us actually, I would say 98, 99% of us, we don't really need that. In my daily use of this, I have actually a display that's a true 10-bit and this one comparing side by side, and I can't even tell the difference. The only one instances where you would be able to tell the difference and you may want to consider a true 10-bit panel in that case is that if you work in a retouching house and you're constantly zooming to five or 600% on a photo to do retouching, when you're zooming that much in, you want to make sure that every color is shown precisely and that's the reason why you would want to consider to use a true 10-bit. For majority of us out there, I would not even worry about this being an 8-bit plus FRC. It is a great panel, it is a great display, and I use this, like I said, for the past four weeks doing actual production work, and it works just fine. The panel inside SW321C is an IPS panel that stands for in-plane switching, and in-plane switching has been a technology that's been around for quite some time now. What in-plane switching gives you is the ability to see true accurate colors, that's number one, 
but mostly what that does is that it gives you a really wide angle view in this case 178 degrees so what that really means is that if you have this display mounted somewhere or on your desk somewhere that's at an angle you're going to be able to see true accurate color still and this is going to be amazing for collaboration with large groups of people too so that when everybody's gathering around the display everybody's going to see the same luminance the same brightness the same color throughout the entire panel and what's really great about that is you're going to be able to collaborate efficiently without having to talk about something else first for example oh yeah the color is off said somebody is actually standing on the side of the display like many of the SWU displays that have come before this one shading hood comes standard what you're seeing right now is a shading hood in the horizontal orientation however should I use the display in vertical orientation BenQ have also included extra pieces for me to easily convert this shading hood into a vertical orientation as well the shading hood is one of those modern designs by BenQ that there is a latch on the side of the display and that's cut into the panel itself so that you don't actually get anything protruding out of the display. This is really great so that if you decide to use or work in a multiple display environment and you don't use the shading hood, you can just literally line the edge of the display up side by side, therefore you're not creating any further gaps between the display. The shading hood inside is lined with felt and this is something that I enjoy a lot about because it minimizes any reflection. But speaking of felt lining and minimize any reflection, let's talk about the design of the 3220U a little bit. The design is great and it's great not because BenQ wants to be boring or anything but this is a conscious design choice that they have made. What they're choosing here is a color that is actually neutral that won't bias your vision when you're looking at display. And the other thing too, part of the reason why gray is chosen throughout is so that this display, when you're looking at your photos, when you're doing work on it, you will actually totally be immersed in your photos and the actual display, the hardware itself will just blend into the background. Trust me though, after reviewing the PD line, their BenQ designer line display, I want an SW that is going to be that flashy. But that's one big thing about the SW line is that it's not flashy, but everything just blends in and you get to focus and immerse yourself with the work that you are doing. This display ships with all the cables that you are going to need. This way when you get it, you can plug it in and use it right away. Speaking of cables, let's talk about the connectivity. This display has two built-in HDMI port. It has a display port and a newly added USB Type-C. USB Type-C is really amazing because if you have any modern computer, or in this case, I have this linked up to my 15-inch MacBook Pro. The nice thing is that this one cable will do a lot of things. Number one, it will carry the display signal. This is the picture that we're viewing on the screen right now. It will also carry the input-output signal to the display. This way, when you run Palette Master Element, you don't have to plug in an extra USB cord. More so, the SWU display also has two USB 3.1 Type-A port on the side of the display along with an SD card slot. That one cable will carry the signal for those input-output devices as well. And lastly, the USB Type-C in this specific model will also provide 60 watt of power to your computer. In this case, if you are running a 13 inch or smaller Apple laptop, you'll be fine. It will power it just perfectly well. However, if you have a 15 or 16 inch MacBook Pro, those draw a lot more power and the 60 watt PD may come to a limitation. On idle, it will be able to power your machine and also charge your battery slower than the charger that have come with your computer, but it'll be able to do that. When you're really pushing your machine hard, that power is only going to be powering your machine. It won't be charging your battery simultaneously at the same time. So in that case, what you may want to do is plug in your power adapter to have come with your machine. And just for reference, the 15 inch Apple laptop comes with an 87 watt power supply while the 16 inch one comes with a 96 watt power. So there is a power gap here between the 60 watt power delivery versus the one that comes from the factory. In my custom calibration of this display using Palette Master Element and setting the display calibration to Adobe RGB Primary, the end result is that I can get a color space that is larger than the actual reference Adobe RGB. In this case, it's about 103 to 105% Adobe RGB. As you can see here in the comparison between the two in Mac OS X Color Sync Utility. This display also includes a new feature that was introduced with the BenQ SW270C and that is Uniformity version 2. In Uniformity version 2, what BenQ does is that when they're calibrating this display from the factory, they have divided this display into multiple different grids. And in all those grids, they have done an individual calibration on them. 
All these data are actually stored in the lookup table and what you're getting from this display when you're viewing a picture is unsurpassed uniformity and color accuracy across the entire panel from left to right and top to bottom. What I have also done is use the X-Rite i1 Display Pro along with their i1 Profiler software to do a verification on this and I can tell you that this display has passed that uniformity test with flying colors. Next up, what I want to talk about is backlight bleeding. It is still there in this model, however, it's actually much further reduced than the other SW that have come before this one. The other thing too is that if you look at the backlight bleeding comparing this model to the one that have come before this one, the SW320, you can see that there is a significant reduction in the way how that blooming is actually looking right now. This display come pre-calibrated from the factory with all the color modes that we have come to expect from the SW line. Adobe RGB and sRGB for photography workflow, Rec 709 for video workflow, mBook color mode that is designed and tweaked specifically to match with any Apple built-in display, the advanced black and white mode which turns your screen entirely to black and white so you can quickly proof black and white photo, Gamut Dual, a feature that allows you to view your pictures in two different color modes simultaneously. But the best thing though, and to get the best result out of this display, what I recommend is for you to go in, download Palette Master Element and do a custom calibration. This way, your profile or the color you're seeing on display is matched specifically with your computer output. And we really can't talk about the SFU line without talking about the hockey puck. For this model, BenQ shipped this display with the second generation hockey puck, which has been upgraded, redesigned. The feel of it is much better. It is much more intuitive to use. And they have also included an extra button on there so you can go and custom function or custom program your hockey puck for that matter for additional functionality. Traditionally, the SW line has really been designed for pro photographers, but with many more of us working now in mixed media, BenQ have also added video specific features to this display too. Especially if you're doing color grading and HDR, this is going to be fantastic for that. This display supports HDR10 format, similar to many of the SW or the recent SW that have come before. But with this model, BenQ have also added in HLG support, that's high log gamma. So if you should be working in HLG or color grading HLG, you can now do it on this BenQ SCV321C2. These are welcome additions for anybody who's working with high dynamic range video. So I've changed the setup here to show you the next feature. I have alluded to this feature earlier in this video, in fact, at the very start, about the new matte anti-reflective coating of this display, and it's really just fantastic. What you don't see right now in my studio is that there are two big lights, two 48-inch umbrella lighting me up, and these are really strong and intense light. This display is barely reflecting anything. I can even angle this up and you're not really seeing any reflective coating on here. The matte coating on this display is much more matter than any display that I've used before. And this includes the SW320, which that is still considered BenQ matte coating display. However, this matte coating really blew it out of the waters. A couple of things about this new matte coating is that because it is a new specialized coating, BenQ have actually shipped this with a roller, and this roller, you would use it to clean your display from dust and debris. One thing you want to make sure not to do is to touch a display because this matte coating is much more sensitive to fingerprint and is really hard to clean it off. The other thing too is that in previous videos, I've mentioned that you can use a microfiber cloth to clean your display or a damp towel. Do not do that with this display because you will damage the matte coating. The only thing you want to use to clean this display is the roller that they have included. One of my friends in BenQ actually called this the Accu Roller, so I'm going to go ahead and use that name because it's a good name. BenQ Accu Color, Accu Roller, yeah. Anyway, so to use Accu Roller, you would just literally roll it on display either horizontally or vertically like so to get rid of the dust on the screen. If this becomes dirty, go ahead and rinse it in warm water, leave it to dry for about 24 hours, and you can go ahead and use it again. Very environmentally friendly. All right, now let's talk about the very last feature and one of the most important feature of this display, and that is a new color mode called Paper Color Sync. So what BenQ have done here with Paper Color Sync is that they have actually implemented a new color hardware mode. And what that new color hardware mode does is change the display white point from D65, where we have calibrated and used our display, to D50.
Now, we may wonder, why do we calibrate our display to D65? Well, the reason why is because we want to be able to see the most spectrum when we're editing our colors. We want to be able to see the most colors and the most tone. And D65, based on human vision, we are able to see the most colors at that color temperature. However, the reason why we have to change or we should change our display to D50 or somewhere around that range when we're printing is because the white point of the paper that we're printing on matches and closely aligned to D50. So in this case, having a hardware mode that you can rapidly change between your normal editing color at D65 to paper color sync at D50 is going to be extremely beneficial for doing print work. And this is going to save you a lot of time. And I've been doing some testing with this, and it, it is true that it does match. And it's quite uncanny how much it matches the screen when you're actually putting the display into this mode. Something to note is that Paper Color Sync, there is also a software that needs to be installed on the computer, and there are very specific process on how to get it set up and get it working correctly. I will make another video about that, and I will also do another separate video and with an in-depth review on Paper Color Sync too, so make sure you subscribe to my channel for that. But back to Paper Color Sync as it is right now. Currently, there are a limited number of printers and paper that are supported, but when you use those paper and printer combined, the result is actually really amazing. So first of all, I have paper color sync set right now, so that is actually corresponding to Epson P600. In fact, what I have actually done is print it on a P800. It is a larger model of Epson, but it's using the same ink set, same technology. For my testing, what I've also done is gone ahead and print the pictures out on a paper called Epson Velvet Fine Art, which is one of the supported paper. For the actual paper itself, before I've actually done the testing, I've actually custom calibrate or custom profile my paper using the i1 Studio so that I make sure that the results is actually guaranteed to match. And secondly, the screen has been pre-calibrated using the X-Rite i1 Display Pro with PenQ Palette Master Element software. So here's the results side by side. What we're looking at right now is a display, SW321C, set to paper color sync, and next to it is a light box made by a company called GTI, or Graphic Technology Inc. Now, GTI has been kind enough to loan me this light box, this studio professional desktop light box, for me to use to review the SW321C. This is their PDV3E model. It is, like I said, a desktop viewer. Inside here, there are two fluorescence bulbs that have been calibrated to D50, so it's designed specifically to match with the color of BenQ display or it's the other way around where the BenQ display has been tuned to specifically match with the light bulb here and match closely with the paper and with this one you can also dim it lighten it up and so forth the other thing too is that should you need this in a D65 you can also do a custom order on that too if you have visited any print shop before, you will find that most of the pro print shop that you go to will have a few of these desktop one lying around, and if not one or two full standing floor models of this of the GTI light box because they are the industrial standard for print proofing. What you are looking at right now is BenQ SW321C in paper color sync mode. The parameters for the Epson P600 printer, along with their Velvet Fine Art paper, has already been loaded in. And what you're seeing on the right hand side right now is the same picture printed on velvet fine art paper. Now there's always going to be a conversion between what you see in your screen to what's actually being printed on the paper. One of the things that will happen during printing is that you have to pick a rendering intent. In this case, the rendering intent for the landscape shot, I have gone ahead and used relative colorimetry. This has to do with the way how the tones and the colors or out of gamut color in this case are being scaled down. This will also account somewhat for the color variation between what you're seeing on the screen to what you're actually seeing on the paper, which is a much smaller color space. For any of the portrait shot that I will show later on, I have used perceptual rendering intent for that. As we can see here, we start to look at the orange in the sky there and the hue, it looks really closely to what you're really seeing on the BenQ screen. The colors that you're seeing in the water and the clear water in front matches really closely to what you're seeing on the screen too. So in this case, Paper Color Sync is doing a really decent job mimicking the way how that picture is supposed to look on print. In this case, if you're able to achieve this every time, you'll be able to save money on the reprint and being able to proof on your screen and get good results and proof this and make this look even close to what you're seeing on your paper. Within Lightroom, what you can also enable is soft proofing 
and then apply the paper and ink simulation on there, choosing the paper profile of your choice. And you can see the, this picture looking even closer to what you're seeing on the light box right now. This is another example that I have. And if we take a look at this picture, we can see that in the log cabins, we're seeing the reflection in the window, the warm tone, the warm tone of the woods in the reflection and also the logs are very similar. The tones on the mountainside looks very similar to what you're really seeing on the screen right now. This way, the print looks really closely to what the screen is actually showing at the moment. A couple of things too that I want to have you guys keep in mind is that the display is still a backlit source. So the video camera is gonna film that very differently than, than it would with a reflective light source, or in this case, the print that's actually showing on the right. So those are the variations between the two that when you're viewing this to keep in mind because it may not show or reproduce truthfully in the video as much as you are in person with these pictures and print on the screen. Lastly, we're looking at a portrait of a model here. And for this one, it was printed using perceptual rendering intent. As we can see, the color in the metal sheets in the building is rendered close to what we're actually seeing in a print. Her skin tone is looking really great. The green foliage in the front, including the little purple flowers and so forth, are being reflective uh, or being represented nicely. The only minor variation in here is that the print is showing a lot more brighter green and yellow hues on the actual foliage on the top versus what's actually showing on the display. Overall, I would have to say that these two are really close to each other in terms of the way how the colors are actually being rendered and Paper Color Sync is looking really good. So that was a brief review and comparison of Paper Color Sync to an actual printout. I will have a more in-depth review coming along that will include the two papers that BenQ have actually done testing on with the Epson printer and also many other papers from Cancel and Infinity which they have generously provided for me to do printing review for the SW321C. A few last things to note about the SW321C is that it does not have auto detect still. So what you have to do is that if you get the display, plug it in, and you turn everything on and your display is show showing a blank one, just go ahead and press any of the four buttons on the display here. And what you can do then is pick the corresponding input selection that you're using, whether that be HDMI, display port, or USB type C. I hope that you enjoyed this BenQ SW321C review and also learned something new along the way. If you have any questions about any of the features that I covered in this video, anything else that I may have covered, or any questions about this display, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below. If you haven't yet, please give this video a like, subscribe to my channel if you are new, and hit on the notification bell so you'll be updated every time I upload new videos, and I have many more videos about the SW321C coming along. And until next time, art is right.